Sarah, we know that giving feedback is important, especially nowadays when the workforce is, I would say majority of them are remotely, some are going to office, some are not, and even hiring is done remotely. So how can employers or leaders give feedbacks to their employees when they're not seeing them and majority of the time are via Zoom or text messages? Yeah. Well, um, number one thing is how do you go into that place of giving feedback? Um, so I, I like to remind folks that people are doing the best they can. They're stressed. They are juggling a lot. They're distracted. Um, and we frankly, we're worried about a lot of things that are totally outside of our control. So if we start from a place of before we actually give that feedback, how do we know somebody's doing the best they can and where, what is their greatness? What are their strengths? Um, it allows us to come from a place of giving resourceful feedback and feedback that gives the person acknowledgement before we, you know, give them some feedback of what needs to be different. Mm -hmm. In fact, a lot of my clients that I'm finding, because the number one keynote I'm delivering these days is recognition in a virtual world is they're realizing that um, when they force themselves before they have a challenging feedback conversation about accountability or one of the many things that people are struggling with in the virtual world mm -hmm. is they realize that this person's greatness may not be visible anymore. So, you know, how would it have shown up if we had been in person and live? Is there any evidence that that still exists that I just can't see it because I'm, I'm, uh, it's it, the visibility of it has been taken away. Um, and if they, yes, I should have been able to see it and I'm not seeing it now. Uh, the next thing I say to leaders is if they're negative, if they're complaining, how is a complaint to poorly worded request? So help that person find a more resourceful way to communicate their wants, needs, curiosities. And then it may be from that place of, okay, we, we unearthed it. And then once, once we've unearthed it, then if in fact the delivery or the tone in which it had wasn't landing well, you can give feedback on that specifically, not about the person as a whole, because people are doing the best they can. However, there may be a few specific things that people can be improving upon. So start with greatness and then just fill in the rest. I totally agree with and especially nowadays as we're talking about mental health is also is something that leaders should be aware but also, you know, people are in the house all the time and they are working, not just yourself, you know, your partner or your wife are here, yeah. your pets are there, your kids. So there's a lot of noise also surrounding the workstation. So that they, I feel that leaders also should be aware of the surrounding. Absolutely. I mean, hey, we're having this conversation with my audio and my tech didn't go well and last week, yesterday even, it was perfectly fine. So, you know, there's so many things that people are trying to manage and, and, you know, figure out there's new things we're learning. As you say, there's lots of people in our life that we're trying to work while they're all in our space. So um, being empathetic, you know, being and frankly, being curious as well. What's this person trying to navigate just to be able to get on this call with me or to show up in a team meeting? If they're normally putting their video on and they're not today, I wonder what's going on in their life. So being more curious than ever before, I think, is a way of supporting people's mental health, well-being. Mm -hmm. And when we're curious, then we're more likely to check up and check out how they're doing and, and frankly, you know, the question you had originally about feedback, the more likely we're going to give accurate feedback that the person can receive because it's in context. Yeah. And I feel that the first question should be, how are you feeling today? Because yeah. that open up and rather than just going, going directly to the work, I feel that that will be a, a good way to start the conversation. And it's, it's funny that you say that one of the insurance companies that I spoke for last week, they've instituted something called um, wellness check-ins. Mm -hmm. And it's not wellness as in intense wellness check-ins. It's just to your point. It's so how's it going? How are you doing off the record? It's not part of the, whatever the agenda is. Yes. And consistently the feedback that people are receiving is um, leaders are hearing about what's going on. People are, are way more transparent than they ever would have been in a formal face-to-face -face, traditional sort of work environment. 
and they're realizing that there is actually a lot that 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 even that individual leader or peers within the team can do. We don't have to outsource it to EAP providers, employment assistance providers to help that person. And maybe these small little things that are standing in their way that that if we just fix those things, mm -hmm. their stress level can go down significantly. And I hope that after this pandemic is over, hopefully soon, when we go back to office, all the things that we learned during pandemic, you know, the feedback, I think should continue and not go yes. back to the old system because I feel that people will like this new system. Yes. Yeah. Let's keep the best of what was, the best of what is, and the best of what could be. I mean, uh, only 30% of North Americans were truly satisfied before COVID. So a lot of people who are saying, well, this is a very hard time to work and it's very challenging. Yes, that's true. And it's not like everybody was, I'm going to work, you know, like that was not, I have yet to hear anybody yes. looking their heels together three times like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. There's no place like work. There's no place like work. There's no place like work. Yeah. I mean, unless you maybe work for Google or had somewhere with a cafeteria, you know, yeah. but you know, the point is, we actually had a lot of things we needed to fix and improve and 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 there were lots of solutions that we disregarded we, we had policies that ran against it people's voice wasn't always heard mm -hmm. this is an opportunity to because the water line has lowered on some of these issues that's already existed now that we see the cracks it's mm -hmm. our choice do we just you know do we ignore them do we try to fill them with like you know temporary or do we look at them and say that is a big crack. We have got to fix that. That's major reconstructive work, but wow, look at the potential on the other side of that. I totally agree with you. And thank you for those great tips, Sarah. Again, for the audience watching or listening, if you have any other tips in terms of giving feedback, please leave comments below and tune in next time for another great question with Sarah. Mm -hmm.